preserving our enlisted history, our traditions, our heritage. Telling the tales of our enlisted heroes, their ideals, their accomplishments, their valor. Since its humble beginnings in 1984, the Air Force Enlisted Heritage Hall has ensured the contributions of our enlisted corps will never be forgotten. It is home to artifacts, historic documents, and the voices of brave enlisted men and women, those who have answered our nation's call. As part of the Enlisted Heritage Research Institute, the Enlisted Heritage Hall supports professional military education students and airmen worldwide with curriculum and research materials. Here they will discover that inspiration awaits those who walk within this place of honor. Our exploration of the Enlisted Heritage Hall begins in the early days of aviation. Here we find displays dedicated to the first enlisted airmen. In 1907, Corporal Edward Ward became part of the Army's fledgling aeronautical division of the Signal Corps. Ward repaired balloons, which were the Army's only aircraft at that time. But powered flight would radically change military aviation forever. Operating a modified Wright Flyer in the Philippines, Corporal Vernon Burge took his initial solo flight in 1912, becoming the first enlisted pilot. Years later, enlisted pilots would make their mark in history. As we move into the early years of World War II, we find a display highlighting the accomplishments of the flying sergeants. Between 1912 and 1942, over 3,000 enlisted pilots served in the Army Signal Corps, the Air Service, and the Army Air Forces. During World War II, enlisted aviators were essential. With pilots in high demand, these NCOs flew military transport planes, bombers, and even fighters into combat. America's demand for aircraft and aviators helped shatter racial barriers as well. The exploits of the Tuskegee Airmen are legendary, but none of their success would have been possible without the aid of their enlisted African-American mechanics. These crucial team members were often recruited from the engineering departments of black colleges. They helped train the Tuskegee pilots by rebuilding broken aircraft that had been deemed unflyable. The War in the Pacific display highlights legendary exploits of enlisted heroism. It features a tribute to Doolittle's Raiders, who delivered the first strike on Japanese soil in 1942. Enlisted aerial gunners flew in the turrets of the highly modified B-25 bombers, which were launched from aircraft carriers. During the famous 30 seconds over Tokyo, Doolittle's raiders struck factories, railroads, and other elements of the Japanese war machine. Low on fuel, many of these brave airmen were forced to bail out over the ocean or crash land in Chinese territory. Some enlisted crew members were captured by the Japanese and executed. But this valiant mission rallied the spirits of the American people and assured Japan that this strike would not be the last. April 12, 1945, Staff Sergeant Henry Red Irwin's B-29 flies a bombing mission over Koryama, Japan. Irwin drops a phosphorus smoke bomb through a chute in the plane's floor as a signal to the rest of the aircraft in his formation. But something goes wrong. The fuse malfunctions and the bomb ignites in Irwin's face, blinding him and filling the aircraft with smoke. Unable to see his instruments, the pilot loses control of the aircraft and sends the plane into a dive. Fearing for his crew, Irwin picks up the white-hot bomb, which burns at over 1,000 degrees. Completely engulfed in flames, he reaches the co-pilot's window and throws the bomb out. The pilot regains control of the aircraft and speeds the horribly injured Irwin back to Iwo Jima. Believing him near death, General Curtis LeMay quickly orders that Irwin receive the Medal of Honor, which is presented less than eight days later. But after 30 months and 41 excruciating surgeries, Henry Red Irwin survived. Here in the Alabama room, we pay homage to Irwin and other notable enlisted members who hail from this state. Alabama native Paul Lankford survived the infamous Baton Death March and spent 42 months as a prisoner of Japan. Though he suffered under brutal conditions, Chief Master Sergeant Lankford endured. He returned home with honor in 1945 and became one of the founders of the Air National Guard NCO Academy in Tennessee. 
The Alabama Room also honors Esther Blake, the first woman to join the Air Force. Blake joined the Women's Army Air Corps in 1944 after being informed that her son was missing after his plane had been shot down over Belgium. Her son returned with only minor injuries, but Staff Sergeant Esther Blake continued to serve until 1954, paving the way for female Air Force members. Beyond the Alabama Room, we enter Gunner's Alley. Here, visitors can see gun turrets from a variety of bombers and the cramped pods where temperatures could reach as low as 50 degrees below zero. As the plane's only defense, sharp shooting enlisted gunners brought down enemy fighters throughout World War II and beyond. But as the war against fascism ended, the Cold War against communism was just beginning. This award-winning display pays tribute to the accomplishments of enlisted airmen during the Berlin airlift. Hey, can you lend me a hand here? The computer-generated airman avatar addresses visitors and tells the story of this heroic effort. Just you got here, they big... In June of 1948, the Soviets blockaded all land routes into West Berlin, leaving over two million people without food or supplies. Only a narrow air corridor stood between hope and mass starvation. Operation Vittles put airmen to the test as cargo planes arrived at Tempelhof Field 24 hours a day for 15 months. Enlisted air traffic controllers scrambled to safely guide in a fleet of aircraft stacked five high in the slim airspace linking the free world to Tempelhof. Airmen joined with German volunteers unloading over 400 aircraft a day. The Berlin airlift saved a city and proved the Western world would stand up to communist aggression. 1950, the Cold War heats up as North Korea invades its neighbor to the south. After three brutal years of combat, American forces drive communist forces back to the 38th parallel. The Heritage Hall salutes Korea's veterans with this exhibit depicting a typical barracks scene. An airman reads a letter from home, assuring him that he is remembered. It also serves as a reminder to us that we should never forget those who fought in what has been called the Forgotten War. We pay respect to our American prisoners of war in this recreation of a typical cell in Vietnam. The walls have been signed by POWs from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and other conflicts. This display honors the heroes who returned and remembers those who did not. Vietnam, 1966. Airman First Class William Pitzenbarger's pararescue helicopter speeds to the aid of soldiers engaged in a heated battle. Lowering himself to the ground, Pitzenbarger exchanged fire with Viet Cong forces while giving first aid to the fallen soldiers. He managed to extract nine of the wounded, but enemy gunfire forced his helicopter to leave the area before Pitzenbarger had a chance to evacuate. The next morning, it was discovered that Airman First Class Pitzenbarger had been killed in action. In 2000, Pitzenbarger was posthumously rewarded the Medal of Honor. Another Medal of Honor recipient from the Vietnam era was Airman First Class John Leviteau. On 24 February 1969, Leviteau's AC-47 was flying a mission northeast of Saigon when an enemy mortar round struck the aircraft. Leviteau suffered 40 shrapnel wounds from the explosion. His crewmate nearly fell out the open cargo door, but Airman Leviteau dragged him to safety. But as he did so, the crewman dropped an armed magnesium flare that was being used to illuminate ground targets. The flare rolled precariously about the cabin and close to the AC-47's ammunition storage containers. Seeing the catastrophe that was about to take place, Leviteau threw himself on the flare and dragged it to the open cargo door. An instant later, the flare exploded. Airman John Leviteau's actions saved the lives of his entire crew. The 
Heritage Hall remembers the victims of the 1996 terrorist bombing of an American barracks in Saudi Arabia. The Kobar Towers display spans an entire wall and honors the 19 airmen killed in the attack. As America's war on terror moved into Afghanistan and beyond, our enlisted heroes heeded the call of duty. Technical Sergeant John Chapman, a combat controller from the 24th Special Tactics Squadron, fought at the Battle of Roberts Ridge in Afghanistan. In an intense close-range firefight, Chapman attacked an entrenched machine gun nest, saving the lives of his entire rescue team. For his extraordinary valor in the face of the enemy, Technical Sergeant John Chapman was posthumously awarded the Air Force Cross. In Chief's Hall, we salute the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Representing the highest level of enlisted leadership, the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force is hand-picked by the Air Force Chief of Staff. Our display includes portraits of those who served in this position and memorabilia donated by former chiefs. As we near the end of our tour, we pass the Wall of Achievers. Here, visitors will see photos of famous actors, musicians, astronauts, and generals who were once members of our enlisted corps. Our journey brings us full circle as we visit the Medal of Honor display. Here we pay tribute to the airmen who earned the nation's highest award for action against an enemy force. With reverence, the Heritage Hall keeps their memory alive so that all may appreciate their noble sacrifices. But this monumental achievement of preservation would not be possible without your help. The mission of the Heritage Hall is sustained through generous financial contributions and by dedicated volunteers. Most of the objects and documents in its collection have been donated by people who understand the significance of this continuous effort. Ever faithful to a proud heritage, upholding a tradition of honor and a legacy of valor. Here, in this place of honor, the Air Force Enlisted Heritage Hall.